Let me show you the big haunting images that we've gotten for you on day four of this invasion. Remember, and I'm reminding you that the invasion has been on now for nearly 100 hours, over 90 hours right now since the first war machines began to rumble. Let's take you through all the big, most haunting images. Overnight, once again, and this has become a familiar sight in Kyiv, which is firebombing, missile attacks, the night sky being lit up in this manner. All of this is taking place at this time. So the first big, uh, first big image of the day. Gunshots, explosions is part of the Russian invasion. The image on your screen captures what Kyiv looked before sunrise today. This is just a few moments ago, these images were taken. Explosions, once again, defining the entire landscape in the city. Second big image of the day, the outskirts of Kyiv has witnessed a massive fire, a huge fire on the outskirts of Kyiv. This is a, a massive fire that broke out at a petroleum base in a place called Vasil Kyiv, which is 40 kilometers away from the capital city. The shelling began at 9 last night, went on till 2 a.m. Several Russian troops fired very close to the Ministry of Infrastructure, which is four kilometers from the city center. So a petroleum center blazing on fire, a deliberate attack on the energy reserves of Ukraine also taking place. Defining image number three, Amidst an increasing crossfire that's been taking place at several urban centers, the threat to the city falling entirely to the advancing Russians is definitely taking place at this point of time. India Today's team, India Today's team has been trying to get out of the city of Mariupol to, he to head to a place called Dnipro. And they tried to do it overnight amidst a crossfire. They were fired upon during one part, they came under volleys of gunfire. India Today is Gaurav Savant, who's become the most watched Indian journalist, along with Rajesh Pawar and Pavan Kumar, had a miraculous escape, ducking the gunfire just in time. They're safe, I can tell you. Here's their unsettling remote report. Viewer discretion is advised. This could be disturbing to some. So we're currently in Mariupol trying to get to Kiev, but it's extremely difficult. So through a contact, uh, we came across uh, Elena. Uh, Elena is also on her way to Denepro. Uh, her driver didn't show up. So what we're doing is Elena and uh, the India Today team, the camera person, Pavan Kumar and I, uh, we are traveling with Elena uh, to Denepro. Hopefully we'll get to Denepro safely. And then from there, we'll find our way to Kiev. There is a broken down APC here on the way, if you see, this is on the way to... And uh, the lady here with us tells us this is a Russian APC which is broken down. And I think Russians have moved into this area because the checkpoints, they were not permitting any car to move. And uh, we are lucky, Just I just say, yeah, we are yeah, Hindus, we are Indians. And somehow he smiled and things were all right. But looks like it will be difficult. There's another car there in front of us. Uh, military vehicle, Russian Toja, at the Russian Toja. Uh, there's another military vehicle. I don't know if it's Russian or uh, Ukrainian, but right now we're trying to escape. A lot of. They are firing on us, I think. They are firing. They are they... firing on us now. They, because I tried to show them on the camera. Okay, you need go, to. Go, 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 go. Don't stop, bro. Don't stop. You need to be very careful. Because Please don't point your camera, camera anywhere, Rajesh. I think... Please take all precautions. <clears throat> I'm driving towards uh, Terepro and uh, with me is uh, Rajesh Pawar, our friend and colleague, uh, also cameraman Pawan Kumar and Elena. And as we drive, there was a military checkpoint. We weren't sure uh, whether that's a mili Russian, Russian checkpoint or a Ukrainian checkpoint. Uh, but as we slowed down there, there was firing. They fired towards our vehicle and, and, and we are now zipping past. We zipped past that. We've come, come across burnt Russian tanks. Uh, we've come, come across accidented vehicles and that just shows that there is panic um, in this region, but as you can make out um, very calmly, uh, we are all trying to get out of harm's way. Roads have been blocked uh, in several parts, trees have been cut and kept on the roads in an effort to block the advancing uh, Russian forces. There is tremendous tension in this area. As you can see, people are trying to flee. Uh, we are currently driving towards Denepro. This is a left-hand drive vehicle. This is a left-hand drive country. 
and uh, we are just uh, trying to go as quickly as we can out of harm's way. Where anybody is? Who? And I want to go straight across to India today is Gaurav Savant, Rajesh Pawar, who joined me live from the, the conflict zone. Two brave journalists who had actually actually come under fire yesterday. We'll go. Uh, let's uh, let's take Lavina off the screen for a moment. Let's focus on uh, the the people in the conflict zone for the moment. I'll go to Lavina right after that. Gaurav and uh, Gaurav and Rajesh, you came under fire yesterday. You know everyone saw it live. That's become a you know a, a, a scary image of what happened. We've been getting call after call. We've been inundated with messages asking about the well-being and safety of both Rajesh and Gaurav. How are you guys doing right now? Where are you right now? And take us through what happened. Gaurav. So Shiv, right now we are on board a train. This train is just about to enter Kiev. We are on the outskirts of Kiev. You can see thick plumes of smoke outside um, uh, here. Now, we were in Dnipro, uh, and because we were in Dnipro, uh, driving from Mariupol to Dnipro, we managed to drive there safely, get to the train station. From the train station, there was one train going. But look, there are these uh, rules of war in place here, in the sense, uh, blackout rules, no lights on in the in the, in the train. We we are traveling in pitch dark through the night. And this train ship is virtually empty. You know, from Mariupol, the train was jam-packed, the train that we wanted to take, where we remained stuck for about 13 hours. That train was jam-packed because people wanted to get to the nearest village. Here, this train, almost no one wants to go to Kiev except those who have relatives there and those who haven't met their relatives, those who haven't seen their relatives. Every there's an update coming and fortunately internet services are still on so people can be in, in contact video call with their relatives their friends and relatives like we spoke to Alex on board this train uh, a short while back he's going back to Kiev for the first time since the, since the bombing started on the 24th he's very worried about the safety of his mother brother his lady friend and um, he's, he just wants to get home and see the level of devastation caused and uh, wants to rally around people now to be able to provide humanitarian assistance and get as many people out of Kiev as possible at a time when the shelling and firing we are told is intensifying. Through the night there were reports that uh, Kiev was being shelled, um, the major petroleum depot was shelled and that locals were asked to keep their window panes shut. Such were the uh, such were the noxious fumes that was coming out of that fuel dump shiv. Absolutely. Rajesh, what are you seeing? You're on the outskirts of Kiev right now. Uh, you know, a f very familiar overnight images, Rajesh, of, uh, uh, you know, buildings on fire, missile attacks, a great deal of rocket shelling also taking place. What are you hearing as you pull into Kyiv now, city under siege? Um, good morning, Shiv. Uh, everything right now, what we see around looks quiet and there is no firing around, no noise of any shelling around here. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you one thing. My estimate is the action, which I have not heard the news, I have not read anything till now, but what I saw yesterday, the heavy movement of troops and equipment to the east of Dnipro River. We have traveled all over eastern Ukraine yesterday. We were in Mariupol, then we were in uh, Zabrosia, then we were in Dnipro, and then all the way towards Kyiv. I have seen movement of uh, people, troops in this area, and my assessment is, Either really heavy action took place last night east of Nipro. And if it is not taking place yet, Ukrainian army is really expecting it because the way movement was there. And I think uh, we saw troops digging fresh trenches, fresh trenches around the dam on River Nipro, which is on the outskirts of Zaprosia. And the deployment was very heavy. And as soon as we crossed Nipro towards the west, the, uh, there were hardly any movement of troops. So my assessment is that right now, the entire action is taking place either north of Kyiv, just on the outskirts of northern outskirts of Kyiv, or on the east of Nipro. And if you remember, that's what we had, uh, that's what we had uh, predicted initially. Yeah. That initial thrust of Russian forces would be to move down south from Donbass <coughs> region, towards Odessa and move northwards from mm. Crimean Peninsula mm. again towards Odessa so that the whole coast is captured by them and they would then they would move towards Dnipro so that the entire Ukrainian territory towards east of Dnipro is consolidated by them mm. and this is what I am 
um, I, I think is happening right now. Has the Russian as presence, as Rajesh, concerned, has the Raj, uh, Russian I presence just, increased? Just, give you an update about Kiev, please. Uh, if you allow me, uh, yeah, shift. yeah, please, 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 Rajesh. Hello. Yes, go ahead, Rajesh. Hello. Can Hello. you can you hear me, Rajesh? Can you hear me? Okay, Gaurav, if you can hear me, has the presence, visible presence of Russian forces on the ground increased? Because the number of videos coming in is still very high. High rate of videos establishing, you know, tanks, guns, artillery, things like that. Uh, is it visible on the ground? It indeed is in some places, yes, Shiv. What, mm. what is very clearly visible is... Uh, is exchange will taking place between the Russian forces and the Ukrainian forces. For example, on this road uh, okay. from Mariupol to Dnipro, uh, at multiple places uh, we saw uh, burnt out Russian tanks, we saw uh, uh, scenes of exchanges of fire, pitched warfare on either side and the movement of troops from area to the other, a very clear indication, Shiv, that somewhere down the line, the, the the front lines appear to be changing uh, and we do not know because you know the, the, the forces are not uh, with their flags uh, in war everything is camouflaged so usually when you'd see ukrainian soldiers moving you'd see that very familiar blue and yellow flag when you'd see russians when you think of russian soldiers advancing you know you you think of the red white and blue flag but that doesn't that is not happening uh, right now uh, the russian forces when we see whatever we do there's a big we mark uh, you know um, in, in in whatever that may mean for them uh, that's, that's the way they are moving. Now, all across this axis, Shiv, this is virtually uh, like what you watch in war movies. Uh, JCDs and trucks moving in to dig up roads uh, to prevent, to stall the advance of the Russian forces. Trees being cut in huge numbers. Trees being cut and put across the road. In fact, at one place, there were so many trees across the road that we actually had to go on the pavement on the side of the road and then move uh, forward. Uh, then yeah, there are uh, defenses hurriedly being laid, those cross, iron cross barriers being put all over the place. So, Shiv, very, very extensively, uh, the, the battle scene is now very, very real. Uh, you hear shelling, you hear firing, you hear gunfire. And of course, we, were, we, we, we saw firing happening in our direction. Um, you know, uh, that, that is how, uh, how edgy everyone is at this point of time here. People are on the edge. You're about to pull into Kiev at this point of time. We're seeing, uh, you know, we're seeing incredible images, Gaurav, also of Ukrainians picking up arms. We're seeing incredible images of, uh, you know, uh, very emotional scenes of people saying goodbye to their loved ones as they sign up with the Territorial Defense Forces. Uh, you know, old and young people, plenty of women picking up rifles and, you know, enlisting to fight back. The Ukrainians are seeing this as a fight for their lives and their freedom. We've... Okay, we've lost that link with Gaurav, uh, unfortunately, but he's on a train. He's about to reach Kiev in just a short while from now. Images like the ones you see on your screen everywhere in different parts of Ukraine. This is near the Hungary border where people have been reunited with their families or are saying goodbye and leaving across the border into the safety of other countries. Many people choosing to stay behind in Ukraine to fight their enemy, that is Russia. On day four of the invasion, images like this from several different land borders because their country is being paralyzed with each passing hour. Most of the attacks are taking place during the night when it's less likely that counter attacks can be mounted. It's nearly 100 hours of Putin's non-stop war machine rumbling towards Kiev. <laughs> And I want to quickly remind you of where the Russian positions are. They've been changing very, very rapidly. Let's just show you where Russia's positions right now are. Let's keep moving. Let's keep the screen moving. Let's, let's put the graphics on the, our screens. Let's put the image on our screen so our viewers can look at what that graphic looks like. Okay. This is where 
This is where the Russian positions are at this point of time. You've got Russian positions in Odessa. You've got Russian positions in the eastern part of Ukraine. And this is, this is the different places in Ukraine where they are. Let's keep the graphic moving, guys. Move it. Let's move it. This is where all of the places in Ukraine where they are right now. I apologize for that. That's a, that's a wrong graphic. I'll, I'll, I'll update that for you in just a moment. So this is, these are the locations where the Russians are positioned at this point of time. We're on day four of the Russian invasion. It's been nearly 100 hours of this military operation that's been mounted by the Russian army at this point of time.